Hey, Tom here from Park Avenue Trading. I want to welcome you all to another segment of Lessons and Stories from a Chief Trader. I haven't done any stories yet, but I will. I'm going to dig out of my journal some funny things that actually happened in a trading room, like Teddy Two Socks and Joey with his stones in his shoes. But I just got to put it together for you guys. But anyway, please, if you like what you see, like, subscribe to the video and actually to the channel. And don't forget to ring the bell so that you get all my latest antidotes for you guys. So I have Ted here um, where we're developing a trading system for him. And I'm going to do a real brief recap on what we talked about last week. Ted had told me that he was interested in two different spectrums of like trading technique. One is WD GAN and one is Richard Wyckoff. I'm more of a Wyckoff student than I am of a GAN student, but I'm I'm pretty well aware of, of, of GAN's ideas and techniques, and I kind of simplified it for you. So without further ado, let's do a really brief recap, and then we can get into the Wyckoff stuff. Okay, so do you see the document here? Yep. All right, so let's just do a brief recap. What I did for... For Ted and for you guys, the viewers, I basically took GAN square and nine and I made it a really simple form uh, because really GAN never really, like I said before, never really said how to use the square and nine. And um, so he, Dan basically said that the, the, the nine, the series of nine was, was where a market turns. So he he said uh, in his writings that a market will turn on a nine. So the simplest way to look at this, I looked at it and a thought experiment was, well, if nine is 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 an important factor for GAN, what we could do is we could say, okay, 18. So 1.8 big figures away from a top, mean lower, or 1.8 big figures from a bottom upward, should offer support slash resistance coming from the top. Because remember, in um, technical analysis, we say that support, once broken, becomes resistance. And resistance, once broken, becomes support. That's the whole theory um, of technical analysis. And another theory of technical analysis is that trends persist. So you, the, the, what I'm trying to stress to you guys is you have to have you have to have trust in the marketplace. What what hap what's happening with the trend is that you know no matter what time frame you're looking on, the trend will persist. Generally, what a marketplace is doing for that day, it's probably going to continue to do. And the, you know, the, Gann also said there was a three day window uh, for markets to basically either continue in the direction that they were headed or actually reverse direction. So there was another time factor that he that he talked about. So going back or going forward with this, the recap was we were using 1.8 big figures, 2.7 big figures, 3.6 big figures. Now let's move on to Wyckoff. And Wyckoff's more my cup of tea. And what Wyckoff basically said, he he was studying price and volume. Volume is a very important thing with Wyckoff. Now in Forex, you can't really get volume, but if, if you're using the volume off of your broker, which is you know, it's not all the volume because your broker doesn't have all the volume. It's just the volume of that broker itself. You have to make a leap uh, assumption that whatever is really going on with your broker is probably going on with every other broker. So that's the leap that you have to make, the leap of faith that volume is, is pretty important. You need to look at volume. And what volume really measured was like when you have a downward movement in the marketplace, but you have you have it on low volume. What Wyckoff was saying was that <clears throat> that's the uninformed trader. That's a trader that's basically just, you know, emotionally getting involved in marketplaces. But when the, when the marketplace comes to a bottom or a bottomish for that day, and all of a sudden you start you start seeing volume increase, and the marketplace is moving up, that's the true movement, because that's where everybody's getting involved to push the marketplace back up. So that volume indication is is important, and we could get into that, but that's you know another video in all itself. So. We'll just do the simplest things like we're doing with GAN, and then we'll go to the charts and look. Wyckoff said that the market moves in waves. And I'm going to refer to my notes here so I can basically have everything concise. You know, 
Wyckoff and the first major tape readers back in the 1920s, like Bernard Baruch, uh, Hetty Green, which was a female. She was known as the Witch of Wall Street, but and it's not a bad connotation because she had the ability to actually pick tops and bottoms unbelievably successfully. She was one of probably one of the wealthiest traders in the 1920s. Um, the Arthur Cotton, the Cotton King, they all basically re re referred to the market moving in waves. Now, Ralph Elliott of the Elliott Wave Theory basically said the same type of thing, but Elliott Wave is a little bit different than this. Um, and another that could be another video in itself. You know, Elliott Wave is very, very subjective. Um, you know, I could I could have asked three different Elliott Wave technicians in my trading room, where are we? And I get three different answers. So because there was no real rules to Elliott Wave, it was just basically, oh, it looks like that, you know. Um, so they they understood that the market moved in waves. The main points that they made were that uh they develop, they do not develop in time periods of equal duration. So every every part every wave is different in duration, but th they they develop in waves of different sizes. But the wave is the wave, and um, if you could study the relationship between bullish waves and bearish waves, uh, you start to understand that um, price movements do not develop in the same way, but in different waves and different sizes and different durations. But we can get an idea of what you know what the market's whispering in our ears, so to speak, by looking at those waves. Um, another point they made was prices do not move up and down in a straight line, but they move in fluctuations. As you can see, they always do. Um, the waves are fractal in nature uh, and they interrelate to each other. So smaller waves are part of the intermediate waves and they're part of the larger waves. And they, they can be viewed because they're fractal in nature. They can be reviewed on any time frame that you're looking at. So if you're a one hour trader or a 15 minute trader or, you know, a, a one minute trader, you could see these patterns and you could actually make decisions based off of what you're saying. Now, you have to remember the patterns I'm going to give you. You know, they're just patterns and every experience in the marketplace is different. Markets will have a habit of repeating, but they don't repeat exactly the same way. And that's what can throw traders off, you know. So let me move my uh, little thingamabob up over here and we could start talking about Wyckoff. So here's basically what I said. Markets do not, uh, they move in waves, not in equal time or sizes. So like if you look at this little chart here, you know, you got an upward move, you got an impulsive wave down. However, the bottom wasn't taken out. Now we could start looking at the top of this wave. The top is broken, it goes another impulsive move up, back down, up, and then, you know, we got distribution and then downward again. And then the market face basically starts over again. So what Wyckoff was really talking about was something like this. He was saying that if you're coming from a top and the marketplace basically goes into a channel um, and you can notice that this is basically what was what would be known as accumulation. Now, we're talking about stocks here, but same things happen with currencies. So you can you can notice that the marketplace goes into a channel and there's a lot of kind of trap movements that occur. And we're going to go over that. However, you know, like in other words, this is the top, the, the red line is the top of the channel. I don't have an ability to highlight my cursor. So the red line is, you know, the top of the channel and um, it breaks out, but then there's a pullback. Okay. But the, the pullback doesn't break the bottom. It's basically just a false move down. This is basically what Wyckoff would be talking about. Um, the inexperienced trader or the, or, or the trader that doesn't really know is basically selling it off and they get trapped in the marketplace basically finally eventually, eventually reverses and back goes back up. Now, if you look at the second series here, the, the, the other series up top is basically another reaccumulation phase. <clears throat> and the market breaks out. Uh, if you look at the, the right side of the red line, you'll see the market basically touches that because resistance has now become support. And then it pulls us up into the final phase, which is basically called distribution, where the marketplace, the big players are starting to sell off their positions, take profits. And then the marketplace basically goes back down into a downward movement. So these phases occur. They occur all the time. Um, now, what we can do at in these phases, okay, 
is, <clears throat> I get my notes here. What we have to keep in mind is that each upward and downward movement is made up of numerous minor upward and downward waves. You know, when one wave ends, the other begins in the opposite direction. So by studying the and comparing the relationships between the waves, their, their, their duration, their speed, and their scope, we're able to determine the nature of the trend. So what's good about Wyckoff is what he said was that when you're looking, if, if some people get confused, they say, well, what, what wave am I in? Where am I? So if you're looking at price structure, because they're fractal, the fractal behavior of the markets, these four forms can be seen in all markets, regardless of their degree of importance. So generally, when, you, when you're moving up and a wave is completed, you're going to have four different ways that the market's going to end the wave. You're going to have a straight upward move, touch the resistance and bang right back down. That's called the climax wave. You're going to have a double top which is people are very familiar with double tops. You know, there's a top, market mark comes up, touches it, can't get through it, back down, double top, okay? Then there's what's known as a pullback. Pullback is market makes a high, comes back down, then it makes a lower high, and then boom, breaks down. Now, I'm going to show you this one, the, the trap used to get me caught all the time. <laughs> I used to always, get, you know, fall for the trap always it was you know i also called it the head fake i you know i'd be like really upset with myself because i i could say this is a trap i'm not going to go for it and i would i would still buy it you know but i would quickly escape and realize it's a trap and then go the other way so what a trap is is the marketplace makes a high comes back down and then bang it blows up through the high now, there are specific ratios that you could use to determine whether or not it's a trap. And, you know, basically, um, that's that's a different, you know, that, that's really proprietary. I really studied that, and I came up with a way. But one of my, my Genesis system is, one part of it is based off of, off of this. So if you want that, join the trading room, and you'll see my trades. They're based off of Wyckoff and a, a couple of other techniques, but primarily Wyckoff. But... What we're going to be talking about um, is, so we see these four different ways, and then the opposite is if if the marketplace is coming down, basically it, it touches support, bangs right back up, double bottoms, okay, you know, pullback bottom, and then, of course, the trap, which is where the Wyckoff spring comes into place. And we're going to talk about Sterling yesterday and the GAN points. So I'm going to, I'm going to quickly um, go to the, the sterling chart so we don't take up too much time in this video and show you where Wyckoff spring occurred and the interesting fact that of the GAN points that we used. And now the GAN points that I came up with for Ted were a simplistic version of GAN. And this could be completely antidotal evidence because I have to go back and test it. But right now it's kind of showing that there is really some validity to this that I should really kind of study some more and i will and you know and i'll come back and maybe in a future video i'll say hey this is what i found out it's antidotal evidence you know it's it's kind of good but it's not great but right now it's basically you know showing that it, it's it, it's it's an interesting interesting point so let me go over to um good old i think this is sterling yeah and i'm not sure let's basically look at what this this is what this marketplace did we 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 took the gan points off of the 18893 level okay because that was the recent top that we had so 188.93 in 1.8 out okay gave us the first level of support right here at 187 like 14 187 13 something like that and then The next level of support, because that would be 2.7 taken out of the 188.93, gave us 186.23. So let me go to the one hour chart. Now, the first movement that we had down was this price right here, 186.63. We have our GAN support here at 188.26. You could have you know, using the trading system, you could have said, well, I got support at 188.26. <clears throat> it's a 40 point risk. 
so to speak. You could just have basically looked at this uh, one hour and said, if the marketplace pierces this one hour, I'm going to buy it. My stop loss is 188.20, 186.20. And you basically would have got a, a, a decent move. But we're, we're here to talk about the Wyckoff Spring. What Wyckoff Spring basically said is that we're looking for a trap. Just like that figure that I showed you on the um, the last was a word word uh, my word document right. So if I take this previous low right here, okay, the marketplace basically comes up to this low. Now this is an interesting point. If you would have bought this breakout, you know this this high of this. Of, the, of this downward bar. Basically, that was basically a trigger to get in. Now, <clears throat> if you would have bought, if, you know, <laughs> if you would have bought basically, say, 70, okay? If you would have taken 70 to, to, to 20, you know, that's a 50-point risk, Marketplace almost gave you one R before it actually retraced back down, all right? So the Marketplace basically came up, came back down. This is the spring. The spring is buying this low. Now you could add two stop losses on it. You could add stop loss like 10 ticks below this low, or you could have said, oh, my stop loss is 186.20. Either way, the spring got you in. Now the spring means exactly that, spring up. How high? Well, <laughs> here's a little trick. If we're using 1.8, as our movement, our first level, 1.8, then 2.7, we could use half of 1.8 to figure out like where the top should be for the day, to, uh, you know, an idea. So if I took 188.51, which I think was the 186.51, 186.51 one, <laughs> is the low, and I add 0. 0.90 pips to it, I'm going to get a target at 187.41 which is right here. That was the target of this. That's a 2R, 3R gain, 2, 2.7R gain. You could escape the trade. Now, this is interesting. Now, what, look at this on the one hour. Sterling Yen is doing what? It's basically using this right now as support. So it's actually using, if I, if I don't want to use that 0.90, uh, which is one half of 1.8. If I go to this point right here, I'd like to see this marketplace basically start using this as support to push us back up to where? I don't know, 188 and a half. You know, I, it, you know it, it needs to get through basically this, you know, the tops, which is way back over here. 188.93 right here. Here's the top. So just by using our little system here with the one point the one point eight down and the two two point seven down, we came up with an ability to find a low risk trade. Either or trade. I mean, you know, because it's in the past, you go, oh my goodness, yeah, I would have loved to, you know, let's go to where we are right here. Um, you could have bought 188, 186.60. I always have a problem with big figures. Uh 186.60. Stop loss one one eighty six twenty, or you could have waited for a Wyckoff spring. Now a lot of times, you know, springs don't always happen. You know, they 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 could come back down, touch, and then take off. So this is like a perfect spring, perfect Wyckoff spring setup, or, or also known as a trap. So Wyckoff is just like we showed on the um, the word document. Those are traps. So just working with these simple ideas we can come up with what we need to do and our main point is looking for low risk trades that's it we don't know if the trades are going to work out we're just looking for a low risk to get involved okay and we quickly escape when it doesn't work and then we reevaluate what's what's happening in the marketplace now i'm going to be completely candid i didn't think that <clears throat> sterling yen was going to drop below 187 and okay, so it dropped 50 pips below. It's not much different, but really I was looking at it and say, what's going on here? Are we shifting? Is the marketplace, you know, 
shifting? Is it going to break back down to 184 again? I didn't know. And I still don't know because really, I in, until that top is taking out a 188.95, we don't know that the marketplace <clears throat> is basically going back up to resume an upward movement. And also, <clears throat> we have to be careful when it goes back up there. Is it a trap? Is it another trap? Is it a double top occurring where then it decides that it's going to resume its trend? So with that, I'll, I'll, I'll leave it there. Uh, Ted, do you have any questions? No, that makes sense. It's uh, it's nice having visual um, <coughs> examples as a visual person to, sort of to see to see those springs. And not only that, you know, if you use those four different um, patterns, you know, the climax, the double top, the pullback, the trap, that helps you determine where where we are. You know, and <clears throat> right now. Two things can be occurring. This could be a trap. How would I know it's a trap? Well, I would look to see at this this one hour if that bottom breaks. Most likely, I'm going back down to eighty seven thirteen. If that breaks, then we could basically get the full pull. 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 So I use this as a trigger. I don't know, can you see my little fingerprint here, like a little hand on yep. the screen? Okay, like that. Like I would look at this bottom. You know, that would give me an indication. Ooh. Maybe this is a trap for the time being. That doesn't mean it's not going to go back up. Just means that I could capture, you know, 30, 40, 50, maybe 60 pips. So if anybody has any questions about it, please make some comments on the video. If you're interested, more interested in GAND ideas, um, I'll be happy to do a video. So we can we can end it there so it's not too long. And hopefully I, I gave some value here. Please. Uh, if, if you like what you see, like and subscribe. Don't forget to ring the bell. Also, head on over to Park Avenue Trading. Get your free three steps book to basically see if a, if a breakout is good or not um, or for a pivot point or Fibonacci level. I look forward to seeing you guys again on the next video, and I hope I gave you some value here. And remember, enjoy the party, but dance near the door. Cheers.